Greetings, and welcome to my protection paladin tanking guide for 7.3.5. This guide will cover most of the basics of the protection paladin, talents, stats, tips and tricks, as well as an overview about the tanking mindset. It will mainly be focused on survival, uh, instead of how to maximize damage. And a disclaimer, I am not a mythic raider. Uh, I'm mainly focusing on heroic and high mythic class keys. Uh, still I will share with you the best of my knowledge about how to succeed at a protection paladin tank. So let's get started. So, let's get started with an overview on Protection Paladin, the strength and weakness. I would say we're a strong tank, depending on the situation. We got the strongest active defenses, but we're also the most squishy when we're out of CDs. That's why it's important to keep track of all your defenses and make sure to get the maximum value out of them. The risky part about being a good Protection Paladin is that you will have to make tough calls. You need experience as a tank and to be able to tell, or at least have a feeling, about the incoming damage. For example, you got a vending rot active, and you're about to take a huge hit. You're also soon out of shield of the right use charges. Do you choose to not use your right use for the hit, and instead heal yourself to full afterwards with hand protector? Which means you will have shield right use available later when needed. Although, if you miscalculated this damage taken, you might die. Or the other alternative is to use shield right use for the hit, and survive guaranteed for the moment. But then you will be out of defensives after the next 5 seconds, and now you won't have a Vending Wrath ready to buff your hand protector. Calls like this is our protection have to deal with when maximizing our efficiency. Since a part of our survival toolkit is meant to be used when we go low, we are also expected from time to time to reach the lower health states. Now let's go through our most important abilities. I'll give you an overview about them and which ones to prioritize. First off is Judgment. It is a longer range damage ability. It also reduces the cooldown on your shield to right use. Use it whenever it's ready. It's usually the most prioritized. And then there's Hammer of the Right Use, which deals a small amount of damage and has a chance to reset the cooldown on a venue shield. With the suggested talents, that I'll go into later, Consecrate the Hammer and Crusade's Judgment, it is spammable and has a chance to reset the cooldown on Judgment as well. Depending on how desperate you are for shield right use, this could be your second prioritized ability, over Avenger Shields even. And then Avenger Shield deals damage and grants an Absorb Shield for 50% of the damage dealt through an uh, artifact trait. Uh, it doesn't help much survival wise against a single target, it's good damage however. It's usually the second prioritized ability, however not prioritized over Judgment. Shield of the Righteous is off the global cooldown. It is the most important ability, an active defense that has to be used correctly. It reduces your damage taken for 4.5 seconds, uh, and this amount depends on mastery. It can reach huge amounts, uh, and the recharge timer reduced by haste, and judgment also reduces the cooldown. Hand of the Protector is also off the global cooldown. It is another important survival tool. It heals for a chunk of your health. Uh, the lower your health is, the more it heals. It can be used on party members as well, to help the healers. Uh, without the talent, I mean, this is a talent. Uh, the ability is instead Light of the Protector. It has a 50% longer cooldown and can't be cast on other party members. Consecration deals damage over time at an area. It also increases the effect of your shield right use and hammer reflector. With the talent Consecrate the Hammer, this ability only deals damage. So if you have the talent, this ability is not suggested to be used if you need to maximize survivability. Now, let's go on to the medium defensives. And by medium defenses, I mean defensive cooldowns that uh, have a semi long cooldown and don't reduce the damage taken by that much. First off is the Eye of Tear. It has a 1 minute cooldown and reduces the damage done by nearby enemies by 25% for 9 seconds. It's good to use when you're running out of shield right to charges or receiving huge damage. Then is Ardent Defender. It has a 1 minute and 20 second cooldowns, which can be reduced by artifact relics. It reduces your damage taken by 20% for 8 seconds and prevents a killing blow on you uh, up to 200% of your health. Uh, when it expires, it also grants you a small absorb shield. It's good to use when you're running out of shield right charges or receiving huge damage. Next up is an ability used both offensively and defensively. It's the Avenging Wrath. It increases your healing and damage down by 35%. can be increased by Legendary Waste, uh, Shade of Frame. It's good to use for damage or for your self healing. It makes you able to use fewer shield right use and let your health drop to regain it quickly with a boosted hand protector. Now let's talk about the larger defensives. 
First off is Guardian of the Ancient King. It has a fifth uh, it has a five minute cooldown and grants you fifty percent to reduce damage for eight seconds. Um, this is reduced by the legendary chest as well. It's good to use when you truly need a, da a strong damage reduction and you're running out of everything else that has a lower cooldown. Otherwise, in most scenarios, uh, you want to use Arn Defender, Eye of Tear, and, and so on instead. Um, unless the damage taken is very, very big. Then it's Divine Shield. It also has a 5 minute cooldown that makes you immune to damage taken and claim most debuffs for 8 seconds. You lose aggro during Divine Shield, however. So be ready to taunt the enemy, and remove your own diamond shield quickly to regain aggro. Uh, otherwise, uh, I mean, you don't want enemies to run around and kill your party members, right? Then we have Blessing of Protection, or Spell Warding. You have a 5 minute cooldown or 3 minute cooldown, depending on which you pick. It makes you immune to damage, uh, physical damage or magical damage for 10 seconds. And this will be 15 seconds with the Legendary Bracers, Uther's Guard. The physical damage taking immunity works like Diamond Shield and makes you lose aggro. Both Diamond Shield and Blessing of Protection are used when you truly need it. There are panic buttons. They will most likely lead to at least one party member becoming dead if you have a pack of mobs attacking you. One important thing is, try not to overlap your defensive cooldowns. It is most of the time a waste. Try to juggle Shield Righteous, Hand Protector, Eye of Tear, Arm Defender, Avenging Wrath to stay alive. That means don't use Arn Defender if you have Shield Righteous up, or AF2, and so on. This depends, however, on the amount of damage taken. If it is high, you might want to stack a few of these. This also includes Trinket procs and Concordance of the Legion Fall. If they are up, you could go a bit more greedy on defensive cooldown usage. It's better not use Shield Righteous if Legion Fall is up, than to do it and be out of all of your defensives and not have any procs up at all. One more thing I should mention about large defensive such as Guardian of the Ancient King is that don't be afraid to use it if you're high on health. If you're out of defensive and you feel that you'll take lots of incoming damage, it's better to use it proactively, instead of using it at a panic button and 20% health and die anyway. Here is an example of what I mean by juggling defensives. As you can see, I'll always have something up. When she Righteous is gone, I have tier, uh, I'll use I have tier. And then the next time, on Defender. And then I have 2 with back of cooldown. By doing this, I will never be out of an active defense. Now, let's go on with the talents. I'm gonna go through my personal favorite talents to use to maximize survival. There are some situations where most talents can find use, however. So first up is the Consecrated Hammer and Crusader's Judgment combo. A lot of protection paladins might not agree with this, uh, but I find it perfect to help us increase the uptime of our strongest ability, the Shield of the Righteous. You're able to get lots of judgment procs by spamming hammered righteous, and lots of judgment procs leads to a lot of shield righteous. And if you have a lot of mastery, let's say also the knight hold set bonus, the damage reduction will be huge. Depending on incoming damage taken, it is sometimes more valuable, survival wise, to spam hammer of the righteous instead of even a venue shield. The higher the damage taken is, the more value we get from Shield of Righteous. Next tier depends on the scenario. All three of these could come in handy. If you feel the need to have a CC available for trash, such as a high mythic plus Halls of Valor with teaming, Repentance is probably the best. Otherwise, if crowd control ain't needed, I stick to Face of Justice. On the next tier, I usually go with Spell Warding, uh, because it won't make us lose aggro like Blessing and Protection. And also, most encounters got quite a bit of magical damage. So it can be used to save our teammates as well on bosses such as Amalgal of Souls when, you know, Salburst cast, the first boss of Blackrock Hole. Uh, I could also see Cavalier being useful in case you need a buff to movement speed. Next here I stick to Hand Protector. This ability to, I mean, the ability to heal port members is huge. It also got 5 seconds less cooldown than Lighter Protector. It is a buff to one of our main survival abilities that we shouldn't pass up on. Next here depends a bit. Ages of Light is a terms and damage action. It's not that big, and using it means we stop rotation to recharge our other defenses. For ourselves, it is most time not worth it. If you coordinate with your party, however, it got times when it come in handy. You can also move during it, which is a plus. Though I mostly use Judgment of Light, unless someone else is in the group already has it. It is some nice extra healing to your DPS team. Last year, I choose Ride the Protector, most of the time. 
Thus, the Fender is too unreliable in most Mythic Plus, since some bosses will have few ads, while others will have none. In race, aren't that many bosses with lots of ads constantly. I don't like Seraphim for survival, since it costs charges on our shield Righteous, which you don't want to lose. Righteous Protect, however, is a very strong, since it have one of the m one of our main survival buttons ready quite often. It is even better combined with the legendary helmet, since with two charges, we won't have to lose out on the recharge timer. Now we go on to the stat suggestions, um, relic suggestion, and also the gear suggestions. So with this talent setup, I strongly recommend a lot of mastery. And even the night set bonus is quite good to have. Um, since <coughs> the more mastery you have, the more valuable it becomes. Oh, and uh, with the set bonus, then I mean the chest and the cloaks are to be preferred. Because they don't have any versatility on them, and still have mastery. Now, when I say that it <coughs> that uh, the more mastery you have, the more valuable it becomes, then it's quite simple. Let's say, for example, you have 50% shield righteous damage reduction. You get 5 additional percent through mastery. It goes up to 55%. You have then made shield righteous reduce the damage taken by 10% more than before. But if you were at, let's say, 75% damage reduction shield righteous, and you gained 5 additional percent, through mastery, uh, so it goes up to 80%. You have then made shield right to reduce your damage take by 20%, which is more than before. This is why this Knight of Set bonus is so strong. This bonus makes your consecration, or well, consecrate the hammer, uh, to shield right to use or hammer take to 30% instead of the basic 20%. The more gear we get, by that I mean the more mastery, the more valuable the additional 10% effect has on our shield right to use. Um, the Shadow Netherlight bonus that increases our mastery by 500 is therefore very strong. Same with the trait bonus to Shield of Righteous Damage Reduction. So the following traits are the one I suggest we get a relic for. First comes the Shield of Righteous Damage Reduction, and then Judgment Crit Chance. After that I would personally go for either Scatter Shadows, which increase the healing down by Hammer Protector, or Arn Defender, to reduce the cooldown on one of our medium defenses. One thing to think about however, is that purely stacking mastery is not always the best choice. For bosses where you tank in intervals, pure mastery stacking actually works quite well. Let's take a rough way, world breaker, most of the Argus fight, high command, etc. But you don't want to you don't want the uptime to be too low. Then you will use time between the recharges. This is why I suggest a good mixture of haste, crit and mastery. While focusing on mastery with the end chance and gem gems. Crit is good since it increases our parry chance, leading to more judgment procs as well as Judgment Crit Chance, leading to less cooldown on Shield Righteous. Haste reduces the all-around cooldown on Shield Righteous, as well as Judgment, and global cooldown for the for the Hammer Righteous spam. About versatility, it doesn't combo well with our other stats. I could imagine just getting versatility could somehow work out, because then it would be quite beefy without Shield Righteous, and healing a lot with the Hammer Tector. But having all your secondary stats going to versatility, and still having high eye level is probably not happening. Unless you're lucky with PvP pieces. But still, I suggest you stick to Mastery, Haste and Crit. Now, let's, let me give you some suggested legendaries. First off is the Head, Sauron's Resolve. It's very strong. Uh, it makes you get another shard, charge, <coughs> an additional charge on one of our active survival abilities. Head Protector. Um, another legendary I would suggest is the Neck, Pridas. Just because you got such a nice combo of secondary stats. Uh, as well as the Absorb, it could come in handy if it procs at the right time. The shoulders are also very strong, since it reduces the cooldown of one of our medium defensives, making it able to be juggled more often. Now, let's talk about some things to think about when you're tanking. Um, awareness and knowledge, these are very important. I mean, it's important for tanks to be aware of your surrounding. If a party member were to aggro, um, or if a caster mob is about to use a large damage ability on you so you can prepare for it, avoiding AoE, etc. It is also important that you have the knowledge of the raid uh, and dungeons that you go into. Understanding the boss mechanics so you don't wipe your whole group and so you know the damage income so you can prepare your active defenses accordingly. Some other tips, or well, rather said personal preferences when it comes to tanking, is you have your camera bit from above. It makes it easier to notice NPCs casting so you can interrupt them. It is also easier to see things on the ground so you can avoid them. One consequence with this, however, it is not as easy to notice if someone in the group were to ninja pull a pack. But let's have faith in our group, shall we? Now the last tips I have. But let's say if someone behind you were to ninja pull. And they won't come to you so you can get aggro. You have to get to them quickly to take over the aggro. 
obviously. Um, however, simply running to them means you have the current mobs you're attacking uh, hitting you from behind. That means you're unable to parry, dodge, or block them. So then I personally choose to back jump, or yeah, that's what I call it. Uh, that means that I turn my character quickly back and forth while still running towards the teammate at Ninja Pult. The purpose of this is to try time it so that the, the moment embassies hit you, you are facing them. So then you have a chance to parry or block or dodge. Um, then you're not losing as much time as you were to backpedal to the party member. All in all, it takes a while to become a good tank. It most likely won't happen instantly. You might wipe a few times because of mistakes, uh, but don't be afraid of them. As you, if you keep learning and improving, I believe you can become a great tank. Uh, that was all for this guide. I hope it was of use to you. If you have any questions or something you disagree with, uh, or if you want to discuss something, then please leave a comment. Thank you and goodbye.